that, but where were we? Okay, so I was talking about um, sensitive to what each other need and acknowledge what the other person wants and what they need and be willing to comply without losing yourself. I'm going to continue to hold, hone in on that. Be willing to comply without losing yourself. At no time should you lose yourself. And if you have a partner that's asking you to lose yourself because of their insecurities, in order for them to feel good, in order for them to feel happy, and happy is an emotion, by the way, then we have a problem because that's not your responsibility. That's their responsibility. Yes, you can you can contribute to their happiness by all means. Absolutely. You can contribute to their happiness. You can contribute to them feeling good and things of that nature, as we should. We should do things to create a level of happiness in the marital relationship. But ultimately, that's not the other person's responsibility. That is your responsibility. That is your responsibility. Somebody say that. Say, my happiness is my responsibility. My happiness is my responsibility. And I can be sensitive to my husband's or my wife's needs without losing myself. And if somebody's asking you to lose yourself, that's their insecurity. They are insecure when they want you to lose yourself in order to make them feel good. That's their insecurity. That is not yours. Right? And they have to deal with that. They have to be willing to work on that. And that takes us to the why. The why is yield to God, God's will, by obeying his word and how you should treat one another. Ephesians is very clear. I know we like to hone in on certain scriptures. The scriptures that we like, but we need to look at the Bible as a whole. What does the Bible say? How does the Bible say we are to treat one another? Somebody tell me. How's the Bible? This we're not even talking about marriage right now. We're just talking about people. How are you supposed to treat people? Somebody tell me what the Bible says about how you are supposed to treat each other. How you're supposed to treat me as your sister? How are you supposed to treat your male coworker as your brother? How are you supposed to treat your neighbor next door? Right? How we're supposed to love one another. So you have to yield to God's will by obeying his words, a.k.a. his principles, and how you should treat one another. Love one another. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Be kind to one another. Be gentle toward one another. Let the fruit of the Spirit reign evidence in your life and how you treat other people. If you see somebody in need, help them. We take these scriptures and we apply them to certain things, but the, the word is all inclusive. It's all applicable. You can take any scripture and see how it applies to your life, how it applies to your relationships, how it applies to your marriage, how it applies to you raising your children, how it applies to you owning your business, you starting a ministry, you running your ministry, you working on a job. You can take any scripture and be able to apply it. So and you shall reap. That's in marriage also. Give and it will be given back to you. Press down, shake it together. That's in marriage as well. So take the scriptures and see what they mean for your life and see how you can contribute to your marriage by utilizing, by yielding to the word of God. Okay? So now we're going to go into the work part. We talked about how marriage is easy. And I'll just recap real quick. Easy. E. Each other. Team effort. E. Evolving as individuals. A, accountability one to another. A, agreement, the power of agreement. A, acceptance, understanding and accepting each other's differences. A, admittance, admitting how you contribute to any present problems. S, self-reflect. S, self-care. S, self-discovery. S, selfless. S, separation sanctuary. S, strength. S, sensitivity or sensitive. And Y, yield to God's will. And this is marriage is easy work. E-A-S-Y, W-O-R-K. Marriage is easy work. And I broke down what easy means. See, many of us, we don't want to do the work. You want the results, but you don't want to do the work. That It doesn't work like that. Tell me, can you go to a, can you start a business and have a successful business without doing the work? Can you have a successful ministry without doing the work? Can you raise successful children without doing the work? Can you have a successful lifestyle and health and fitness without doing the work? Let's say you want to lose 20 pounds. What work is involved in losing 20 pounds? Some of you need to lose 20 pounds in your marriage. Some of you have marriages that are full with a bunch of bondage and baggage and brokenness from both of you past, both of your past. 
And you need to get rid of that 20 pounds of bondage, 20 pounds of weight just sitting there, just destroying the marriage. That's festering and getting bigger by the day because you're not feeding the marriage what you need to feed it. Marriage in itself is a relationship. You have the husband, you have the wife, and you have the marriage. The marriage in itself is a relationship. What are you doing to fuel the relationship? What are you doing to make sure that that relationship is healthy? And that starts with you. So you have to make sure you are healthy first before the marriage is healthy. You can't, you, if you're sick, thank you, Holy Spirit, if you're sick with the flu and you're going around coughing on people, you're going to get them sick. The same thing in your marriage. If you go around coughing your issue, coughing your rejection, <laughs> coughing your abandonment, <laughs> coughing your abuse, <laughs> coughing your pain, <laughs> coughing all of those things into the marriage, you're going to get your partner sick. The marriage is going to be sick and it will not get well until you get the antidote to the cough. What is the antidote to the flu? What type of antibiotic do you need in order to cure this sickness in your marriage? What do you need? Do you need self-discovery? Do you need individual healing? Do you need to be delivered? Do you need to self-reflect? Do you need to get rid of that attitude? Do you need to get rid of that mindset? Do you need to go and face that issue when you were a five-year-old little boy or five-year-old little girl? Do you need to go back and confront that issue when you were in that former marriage or that former relationship of that person that hurt you? Do you need to go back and dig up some skeletons and dig up some things and confront those issues? Because what I will tell you is that you will not be able to conquer what you do not confront. So as long as you allow that thing to continue to fester in your life, it will fester in your marriage, it will fester in your family, it will fester in your community. It will fester your churches. It will be a big fester. You will have an in uh, 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 a spread of diseases and illnesses that's going to follow you. You have an in and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Infestation. I think that's what I'm looking for. You will cause so much damage and so much harm. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm looking like an infestation. That's what I'm looking for. Infestation. You will infect so many things. And many of you are seeing that already. You see your children act just like you. Your sons act like your husband. The daughters act like you. Their relationships are just like your, you and your husband's. Come on, somebody. If it's not like you and your husband's or you and your wife, they don't want to get in a relationship because of how you all are not able to successfully be in a relationship. I know I'm talking right. Because as my niece Tierra says, it's a domino effect. Hurt people hurt people, whether you know that or not. Hurt people hurt people, whether you know that or not. Even though you did not intentionally hurt your daughter or hurt your son by the, the, the toxicity of your marriage covenant, it's now affecting them. Because guess what? The toxicity of the marriage covenant that you saw, or the example that you saw growing up, it affected you subconsciously. And regardless if you went to school, regardless of how many degrees you have, how many labels you have in front of your name or behind your name, if you don't deal with those issues, they will deal with you. Something I always say, if you don't deal with the issue, the issue will deal with you. And it will deal with your children, and it will deal with your children's children. And some of you have children that are now operating in a disservice place because you have been a disservice to your children. So the best thing you can do for your children and your marriage is you get free. The best thing you can do for your children and for your marriage is you get free. You uh, walk, you start working on your individual freeing, which is your individual healing, which is your individual deliverance. Because now you see your daughter out there. She's a hot mess. You see your son out there. He's a hot mess to other people's daughters. You see this ripple effect because of what you planted. Regardless if you meant it or not, you planted it. You planted it into the lives of those people that are around you. And many things that we were taught growing up, we were also we also caught growing up. Because there were many things, not my father and my mother did not sit me down and teach me, but because of what I saw is what I do did. Monkey see, monkey do. Somebody type that in the comments. Monkey see, monkey do. And they automatically do it. And when they get in these relationships, they show up. This stuff is going to show up. Don't get blindsided by degrees and, oh, they go to school and college and they do this and that. It's going to show up when they get into relationships. So let me go into the work, you guys, because I can preach on this all day long because I know this to be the truth. I know this to be the truth. Work. So we talked about easy work. 
W, will to want to do whatever it takes to nurture, grow, and fuel the marriage relationship. You heard Will and Jada say that they have an unbreakable bond. They have an unbreakable covenant. They are unbreakable. That's the same goal that my husband and I are working on, to be unbreakable. So are you and your spouse unbreakable? Are you willing to do whatever it takes to grow, nurture, and fuel the marriage? Let me know. Raise your hands if you are willing. Are you willing? Those times when you don't like them. Those times when they annoy you. Those times when they go against the grain. Those times when they go against what you wanted to do or what you told them that they should be doing. Those times when you're indecisive about a major decision. Those times when you want to pick the children over him or over her. Those times when you want to pick friends over him or over her. Are you still willing to be unbreakable? Those times when you have those awkward or weird moments or, or those moments when you just like, I don't even know if I want to be here anymore. I don't even know if this is my life anymore. I don't know why I made this decision. I think I want to be with somebody else. I think I want something else. I don't even know who I am. In those moments, are you willing to be unbreakable? Are you willing to say, I'm in this thing until I die. I'm a ride or die chick. I'm a ride or die dude. And that's not in it, tormenting the person, but you're in it. You're riding and die, dying, but you're also making sure that you're giving as much as you're taking. Come on. You're giving as much as you're taking, and you're taking as much as you're giving. Because sometimes we need to take. Sometimes we always give. Sometimes you need to take. And that goes back to you being selfish at times. The O, opportunity. Opportunity. Seeking out daily opportunities to serve one another. Do you do that? There's a message that's going to post in a marriage couple group sometime this evening. And I ask, how did you serve your spouse today? And serving doesn't always have to be a manual thing. You know, we think about serving. We always think that you got to be manually doing something for the person. You got to run out out. You got to buy all the, you know, get this, spend money. And no, that's not. You can serve them by praying for them. You can serve him or her by calling them and say, you know what, honey, do you need me to pray uh, about something for you today? My husband, for instance, he had meetings today, right? He had, he's traveling. He had meetings today. So I served them this morning at like five something in the morning. I sent him a prayer, right? And then I wished him well in the meetings that he has had to this morning. And when I get off here, I'm going to call him to see how everything went. That's serving. That's, oh, glory to, oh, y'all just don't understand the burden that I have on my heart for marriages. And I know that's why the devil attacks my marriage. I already know. We already know. We already up to the game. So we good. We good, right? So the burden that I have, when you serve each other. You're setting aside your own agenda. Somebody put that in the comments here. Lord God, that's a quote. I'm going to write me a quote book. How many of you would like a quote book? When you serve each other, you put your own personal agenda to the side. You know what the problem is? We're all too busy trying to make it. That goes back to self-discovery. So now you're in the self-discovery phase. You're trying to find out who you are because maybe you didn't do that. Or you may have felt that you were trapped in the marriage for the first couple of years, first five years or whatever the case may be. Or you just may feel like that like you really want to do something different and the world is waiting on you and you have these explosive dreams. And sometimes your partner may not understand those dreams. So now you're 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 a boss, right? You're in boss mode. Um, so now you're you're going to try to reach the limit and reach the sky and be this explosive person, and you don't want to serve because you don't want to put yourself to the side because you've already put yourself to the side. You put yourself to the side for the last two years, for the last five, for the last 10, for the last 15. But serving each other is not necessarily putting each other, putting yourself to the side indefinitely, but it's moments in the marriage where you will have to put your agenda to the side to serve the other person. So are you seeking out opportunities to serve your spouse daily? Yes or no? Will and Jada said it best. They said that each of them take out 10 days, so 20 days total, to serve the other person. 10 days they do what Will wants, and 10 days they do what, J what Jada wants. And that's how they serve one another. And I'm sure in, in a variety of ways, but that was the best example for this particular nugget here. So are you willing to put yourself aside to serve? Okay, the R, responsiveness, responsiveness. You have to be responsive to each other's needs and their desires. Are you responsive? Do you know when your husband is in need, be it of sex, be it of encouragement, be it of comfort? Because I don't know why we think that men are just these super strong beings and they don't need any care, 
compassion, comfort, or any of that. That's such a lie. That's such a lie. They have emotions, you know. They have emotions. <laughs> you know, they want to know, they want you to ask them how their day was. They want you to ask them, well, honey, do you need anything? You want me to procure anything to, to eat? I'm, I, hey, I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to myself, too. So I'm not just throwing shots at you guys. I'm talking to Trail Ravenel. So we have to learn how to be responsive and see when they're in a state. We have to be so observant. And that O can also be for observant. We have to be so observant to know what they're going through, what they're dealing with at that time so we can serve them in that way. The same thing that God does for us, right? When he sees that we're in need, when he's observing us and see that we are in need of something, does he not come to your aid? Love, marriage is the greatest demonstration of Christ's love toward his church. I'm gonna say that again, something I always say. Marriage is the greatest demonstration of Christ's love toward his church. So in marriage, we hone in on submit to your husband. But did you know right before that, Paul said that we are to submit one to another? How many of you knew that? How many of you knew that Ephesians 5 and 22 says submit one to another? We have a dual responsibility of submission. Yes, the wife is going to take it in a, another level because the husband is the head and the leader of the home. And as, as he submits to Christ, you submit to him. So there'll be some things that you won't be able to submit to him in if he is desiring you to do something or partake in something that's contrary to the word of God. And I talk about that in my devotional that will be coming out. In it to win it, January 1st, it will be ready January 1st. In it to win it, 31 day guide on how to improve communication and maximize intimacy in your marriage. So getting back. So yeah, submit one to another. That's the scripture. But we, we look over that, men in particularly, they look all over that and they will submit. The Bible says submit. But do you even know what that means? Do you know what it means to submit, husband, man? That does not mean that you control. That does not mean that you know, we're doormats that you just walk all over us and that we have no voice. We have no opinion. We have no say so. That's that's not what that means. And I talk about that in my book as well. I talk about what submission is not. And I talk about what submission is. OK, so you can get the book. Responsibility are responsibility. You are responsible for your own actions and for yourself. You are responsible for your own actions and for you. You're responsible for handling you. And you're also responsible for making sure that you're contributing to the marriage and making sure that you're operating according to Ephesians 5, 22 to 33, 1 Peter 3, and all the other scriptures that apply to life in general and marriage. You're responsible. You are. And then the K. Know when you're lo you are low on fumes and you need to refill. Know when you're low in fume, on fumes and you need to refill. And I had another key. I had knowledge in the word of God and the ability to apply it effectively because I really truly believe, and I know not believe, I know that um, the Bible is the guiding principle for marriage. So whether you're spiritual or not, it doesn't matter. The Bible is the biblical principle for marriage because marriage was created by God. It wasn't created by man. It was created by God. So the instructions are in the word of God. So if you want to do marriage successfully, just look in the book. Just look in the book and apply the word. But what I can tell you, it's easier to, um, if you aren't spiritual, it's, it's easier to submit to God in doing these things. Because if not, you'll be trying to do it in your own strength and your natural ability. And that's very hard. When you have no spiritual connection or bond with the creator, when you have no spiritual connection or bond with the creator, it's going to be very hard. And uh, you're going to find yourself frustrated and upset many a days, but you can still have a level of commitment because, because that can be one of your values. One of your values can be, I'm committed to the end. One of your values can be, I don't believe in divorce. So you won't get divorced, but it's going to be hard. Okay. So some takeaways, some takeaways is free your partner. I heard Jill, Jada and Will, free your partner, free them to be who they are. 
free them to be who they are and stop trying to hold them in bondage and baggage because you're dealing with brokenness. Free them, right? Something else they said, well, they didn't say, but I said this one. Free yourself. Free yourself to love. Free yourself to forgive. Free yourself to get over it. Free yourself, as um, Pastor Tamika says, to live over it. Free yourself. Stop stop wallowing in, in regrets and bondage and doubt and fear and all of these things, right? Create an unbreakable bond. How many of you want to create an unbreakable bond? That's our goal, to create an unbreakable bond that whatever happens, there was a video, a guy was getting married and he said to his bride that you are already forgiven for anything that you will ever do. That's an unbreakable bond. When you're saying regardless of what you do, it doesn't even matter. You are forgiven over top on top of forgiveness. That's like forgiveness squared, right? Or to the power of eight, the power of 10, whatever, you are already forgiven. An unbreakable bond. Uh, another thing I heard them say, not directly, but kind of indirectly, the thing that everyone is looking for will not be found by trapping someone with vows. Well, no, Will did say that, actually. He said, the thing that everyone is looking for will not be found trapping someone with vows. So my single people that are on here, if you're looking to get married because you want to feel fulfilled, complete, or you just like what you see, all the hip and ho hype and holler, because of everybody else, they look good and all the power couples and you want that status. That's the wrong reason. And whatever you're looking for, whatever fulfillment you're looking for, you will not find that in a man. And you will not in my men, you will not find that in the woman, in a woman. You can only find that within yourself. Again, whatever you're looking for is inside of you. You have to activate it. Okay. Uh, get rid of false expectations. Again, I share this story all the time, how me and my husband both had false expectations for one another. You have to get rid of false expectations because they will leave your feelings hurt many a days. Um, internal and external journey, journeying, you know, you have to know, you know, Will and Jada talked about how they go um, to different places, you know, Jada likes to go to the same place all the time, whereas Will likes to go to different places, you know, know, are you an introvert or are you an extrovert? You know, we both have different characteristics. I'm an introvert and my husband is an extrovert. I can be extroverted, but my um, innate ability and my number one primary is introvert, but my husband is not at all. So you have to be able to bounce off of one another and appreciate that aspect about them and that, that personality about that person. So you can, you can, um, you can leverage those uh, abilities and leverage their strengths in that area. Okay. So you can be the calm or he can be the calm. You both might be inter introverts or both extroverts, but you still have to know how to balance and bounce off on one another. Hey, Cynthia. Okay. And and another thing it takes, um, it took them a lot of steps together and apart. So it takes you walking with yourself and it takes you walking with the other person. And I'm going to say it takes you walking with God. You know, they they talked about it, it took years and, I'm, and I think even decades for them to get to that place. It's going to take time. This is not something that's going to happen overnight. These are things that you have to constantly work on. You have to constantly build. You have to constantly be intentional about every single day. This is an everyday process. So as much as you're, um, you know, concerned about your business or concerned about whatever your individual goals are, you need to also be concerned about your marriage. Yeah. You need to also be concerned about your marriage. It takes lots of communication, lots of communication. I did a series on communication. I'm always talking about communication. You have to be able to communicate one with another. One of the top reasons for divorce is the lack of effective communication. You have to be able to talk. If you can't talk to your spouse, forget it. Forget it. Because nothing, you will get nothing across. Nothing will get resolved. Nothing will be handled. You can just forget it. And then last but not least, something, uh, sometimes it does take hurts in order to heal. Sometimes it does take hurt in order for healing to take place. Yeah. In order for healing to take place, sometimes hurt has to be present first. So listen, you all. If you watch this video, there's another part on here, Cynthia, too, but my Facebook was tripping. If you looked at this and you looked at the Red Table Talk and you're not willing to do what it takes, then you need to just go ahead and exit stage left. I'm just going to say that. And I am pro-marriage. Anybody knows me knows that I'm pro-marriage. And one thing I do know is that if you're not willing to transform together, it's not going to work. 
If you're not willing to transform together, if you're not willing to do the work together, it's not going to work. It's not. I mean, even, you know, the scripture talks about you, 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 you can win your husband over. Yes, you can win your husband over. I am a believer in that. But he has to be, he has to desire to be won over. He has to have a willing heart to say, okay, I love my wife enough. I love her enough to where, you know what? I want to change. I'm not changing for her. I'm changing for me because I need to. So I need to look at some areas in my life to see where I'm broken, to see where the missing pieces are so that I can be better for myself first and then be better for her. But he has to have that in his mindset. If he doesn't have that in his mindset and he's like, I'm not changing. I'm going to be me. I'm going to do me and you can do you. That's going to be very hard. It's going to be very hard in that marriage covenant. And if he's not willing to do what it takes, maybe you need to go see a counselor, right? Maybe you need to see a therapist outside of your pastor. Go see a professional you know, licensed therapist and talk it out with them. But he has to be willing to contribute. If he's not willing to contribute, if she's not willing to contribute, it's going to be a hard journey and things may never change. There's a difference in willing and, and, and wanting to than not willing at all and not wanting to. So there's a difference in willing, but I don't know right now, you know, I'll let you know when we can go or the time is not now, but I do know I want my marriage and I do know some things that have to change. And I need to look at my own life, but I'm not ready to face that, right? That's a difference than there's nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. You're the problem. You go fix your problem and we'll be fine. Those are two different things. So if built either your husband or yourself or you or your husband are saying, your husband, you or your wife are saying, uh, you know, yeah, I want to get help. I know we need help, but I just need time. Then that's one thing. If they're saying that I'm not the issue, you are the issue. And until you get fixed, this will always be broken. That's a whole nother issue right there. And it's going to be very hard. And you're going to need to make a decision on what needs to be done. Because I can tell you right now that that's a toxic relationship. And I can tell you right now, if your children, if there are children involved, all you're doing is spilling your toxicity, your cough, and all of your um, your contagiousness over your, on your children's lives. And they're seeing it, regardless of how much you're trying to fuss or fight or whatever, they're seeing it, they're picking it up, and they know what's going on to some degree. And you're causing them a disservice. And you're also negatively impacting their future relationships. Okay? So that's my time. We've been on for an hour, for about an hour, because the last video was like 40 minutes. So, guys, go back and watch the first video. Share, please. Um, every Wednesday, for those that don't know, every Wednesday in my Married Couples Who Win group, there's 5 a.m. prayer every Wednesday morning. Um, I have a YouTube channel, Cheryl Ravenel, where I post YouTube videos every week. Make sure you check that out. I'm on a sex series, so we're talking about sex, baby, sex and marriage. So go ahead and check that out for me. Subscribe, like, share. Listen, I am on a goal. I am on a mission. I have a goal. I have on a mission to save 1 million marriages, but I cannot do that without you. I want to connect with 1 million women and helping them to transform so that they can trans be a contributor to the transformation process in their marriage as well. So if you guys know people that need to be connected to this movement, you know, give them my page information. I'll put it up here for you, Wives Who Win. They can connect there. That's the um, my business page. Or they can connect to Married Couples Who Win Training Center. So I have a few different places, Married Couples Who Win Training Center and also Wives Who Win. You know, connect these people with these resources. I wish I had these things prior to life. I wish I had things I, I could have as preventative measures that would have helped me do life a little bit easier, a little bit simpler, do relationships a little bit easier, a little bit simpler. But I didn't have that. But you guys have that. These things are available to you. No, I'm not the only one, but I am one. I am one person amongst millions of people that can be a resource and, a, and an aid to you. So I pray that you take advantage of these resources. And a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and pray us out right now. So let me know if you guys enjoy this this um 
the session. I know we were on here for quite a while, but I wanted to get it out. I wanted to share with you all what God had placed on, on the inside of my heart just by me watching the video with Will and Jada and being inspired by their story. And this just being Marriage Monday, and I know how the enemy is trying so very hard to separate couples. I wanted to come on, and I just wanted to share with you all. So I pray that you were able to just feel a piece of my heart on tonight and that you will take this and you will be a creator of change in your life and also in your marriage. Thanks to all that shared the video. Thank you, Tanja. Thank you, Karkithia. I really do appreciate you for sharing the video. And I'm going to go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you on tonight. God, I thank you for just allowing me to share with your people what you place on my heart. God, I thank you that as a result of them hearing this message, that they will not allow this message to... Um, to go in vain, but they will take this message and they will apply it to their own lives. I pray that each every each individual will look at their own lives and not look at what their partner has brought to the marriage, what they have done wrong, or or blaming them for anything, Lord God. But they will look in their own lives to see what they how they can contribute to a better life and a better marriage. Oh Lord God, I pray that each every each individual will just will just self reflect and self discover who they are, Lord God, that they will know their identity in you and stop looking to their partner to fulfill, to sustain, or to make them whole, because that's in you. It's in you we live. It's in you we move. It's in you we have our very being. So God, I thank you for this message on tonight. I thank you, Lord God, that as a result, someone will be healed. I thank you that as, as a result, someone will be restored, that marriages will be reconciled as a result of this message, oh God, because it's not about me. It is all about you. And I thank you for just sharing with me. I thank you for placing the burden on me for marriages, oh God. I thank you for the passion that you have given me, Lord. God, a passion that I'm going to continue to fight for until the day I leave this earth. So I thank you, Lord God, that transformation has taken place in the life of your people, and they will be able to say that God did it. He restored, and he received all the glory and all the honor. For in your son Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right, all right, all right. Well, I love you all so much, but God loves you best. And until next time, you all be blessed. Make sure you catch me at the Married Couples Who Wife Training Center. I did post that group here, and I also post the page here. Um, I'll go ahead and post my YouTube channel so you guys can have easy access to all of those resources. And again, these are resources. I believe in providing resources because I know it's resources that will help you uh, in your marriage, that will help you in your life. So I pry on providing resources. I am a teacher. I am a preacher of the gospel. God has called me into many roles. So make sure you guys take advantage of these resources so you don't have to do life by yourself and have to do life difficult. Thank you, Sophia. I appreciate you. You're welcome, sweetheart. I appreciate you so much. Sarissa, darling, you have to go back and watch the replays, honey. It's two videos because Facebook wouldn't let me be great. So love you all. Be blessed.